time, we invite our children to go with a blessing as they continue on to their children's ministry, his kids, to learn of God's goodness in their lives. God bless you and keep you. May his spirit fill you with wisdom and knowledge and power. Amen. Well, happy Reformation Day. It is interesting that in this particular Reformation Sunday, Reformation Sunday and Reformation Day actually coincide. For those of you who aren't familiar, it was actually on October 31st, 1517, that Martin Luther nailed the famous 95 Theses to the door at uh, Spirit. Uh, wait, wait a minute, I'm trying to remember the name of the church now. Was that Wittenberg? Um, it was in Wittenberg. It was a church. And he nailed it there right on the door. Um, <laughs> so uh, this is the day that we celebrate that, and it always does fall on the 31st, but of course, Sunday doesn't always fall on the 31st, uh, so whatever that closest Sunday is to the 31st is when we typically celebrate Reformation Sunday, so it's just kind of unique that this year they fall and coincide on the same day. Something else that might be of interest to you is that while on the 1517 is when he nailed that 95 Theses to the door, the day in which he uttered those famous words, here I I stand, I can do no other, God help me, amen, in his defense of his Reformation teaching. That occurred in 1521. So this is actually the 500th anniversary of that historic day as well, although it didn't happen on the 31st, but it did happen according to this year. So 500 years, that's a long time, a long time to be remembering and celebrating, and of course, there's no coincidence that we chose this month of October to be talking about our Lutheran distinctives, guiding us through this sermon series, A View from Here, looking at the lenses by which we see things, these lenses that were passed down to us through the Reformation, through the teaching of Martin Luther and others. And each one of them has been helpful. We've talked about law and gospel, the way that helps us to see the Scriptures more clearly. We talked about the theology of the cross that helps us to see God more clearly as he is revealed to us through Jesus on the cross. We've spoken about vocation, our calling into work, and how we see that daily work more clearly. We talked last week about the priesthood of all believers that allows us to see one another more clearly and the gift that God has given each of us to be able to be priests to one another, bringing each other in prayer and scripture before the Lord, even to that place of confessing and absolving one another of our sins as brothers and sisters in Christ and as the scriptures teach us. These are all part of being a disciple. They're all things that we look back to the Reformation and to Martin Luther with gratitude for, and we celebrate those things today. But here's the thing. While it is good and right to speak of Martin Luther, and I am grateful for his contributions and everything that he did, the reality of it is, is he didn't bring the Reformation. That can only be the work of of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who gave birth to the church some 2,000 years ago. It is the Holy Spirit that has sustained the church through 2,000 years of history. It is the Holy Spirit that inspired Martin Luther in the work that he did and others. And it is the Holy Spirit that today continues to inspire and fill and do his work in us to bring about reformation, revival, renewal, restoration in our lives and through us into the church and out into the world. It's all part of what it means to be a follower of Jesus and to be a part of his church and to recognize the gift of reformation. We've been talking about these things that help us to see things clearly, but here's the thing. When it comes to the Holy Spirit, oftentimes we have a blind spot. I won't say that it's just for us as Lutherans, but, but in many cases, those who were raised in a mainline denominational church, whether it was Lutheran or Methodist or Presbyterian or Episcopalian or one of those other names that uh, we go by in our different denominations, there's a good chance that you didn't hear a lot about the person and work of the Holy Spirit growing up. I know I didn't in my particular tribe as I grew up. Now, we would hear the Holy Spirit invoked, of course, in a blessing or a time when we begin a service in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We, we would hear the Holy Spirit spoken of in the Apostles' Creed or with a little bit more length in the Nicene Creed, if perhaps that's the tradition you were raised in that spoke that great creed of the church. 
But the reality of it is, without those places or in a baptism or in other circumstances, we often didn't hear that much about the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. And here's the thing. Without the infilling presence of the Holy Spirit, we are blind to so much of what God has done, is doing, and will do in the world. We want to be able to see what God is up to, how he is at work, but there are blind spots. And the fact is, we all have blind spots. You might not realize it, but everybody in this room has blind spots. Let me show you. We're going to do a little experiment together here today. You ready? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your left arm, put your thumb out about, you know, just full arm's length away from you, straight out in front of you, okay? Now close your left eye and just look at your thumb with your right eye, okay? Everybody's doing this now. Now take your other arm and put your thumb right up next to it. Now, while continuing to stare directly at your left thumb, slowly move your right thumb to the left, and you will see a spot where it disappears. If you move back and forth just a little bit, you have to move slowly, you'll see a little spot where it disappears. Did you see it? That's your blind spot. Everybody has one. There's a spot in your eye that is blind, and and it's compensated for by looking at things through the other eye. But it can be a little disconcerting that first time you see your thumb disappear. We all have blind spots. And it so happens that the blind spots related to the Holy Spirit are really critical in our lives. And we miss something if we don't understand the work of the Holy Spirit and the person of the Holy Spirit in our lives. You see, without this infilling presence of the Holy Spirit, well, we are often left blind to something as simple as our own salvation. You see, the fact of the matter is, is that you can't make yourself a Christian. And your neighbor can't make you a Christian. And you can't make your neighbor a Christian. Try as hard as you might, it can't be done. Because as Scripture teaches us, the only way that you can become a Christian is to be born again of the Spirit. You becoming a follower of Jesus is the direct work of the Holy Spirit. You know, Martin Luther helped us to understand this a little bit when he gave a description of the third article of the Creed in the small catechism. Some of you were with me in our class over the last few weeks talking about Luther's small catechism. And if you recall, the third part of the Apostles' Creed says, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, Martin Luther, in response to that, said these words, I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to Him. But... The Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified me, and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. See, Martin Luther got it. And after years of of being a part of a tradition in the Roman Catholic Church, that was making it about working in yourself or working something out of yourself in order to earn salvation, Luther made it clear, this is a gift of grace that comes only through faith. And that that faith itself is a gift, a gift of the one and only Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit's work that brings us to salvation. And when we are blind to that, we spend an awful lot of time trying to prove to ourselves or prove to others that we're really a Christian. 
The fact is, it never works that way. We can't prove anything to ourselves, to our neighbor, or to God. He does the work, and he does it through his Holy Spirit. Now, because of that, if we are blind to that, the reality is we also then easily become blinded by fear. If we're constantly living in a place of wondering whether we are saved or our neighbor is saved or whether somebody else is saved and whether we can do something about it, by convincing them or arguing with them, well, that leaves us in a place of perpetual fear. Fear for ourselves and fear for the world. We look around and figure it must be our job to fix these things. It must be our place to prove everything wrong in the world and prove that we are right in some way. It's not our work. Because that work will always lead us to a place of fear. Romans 8, 15 through 16 says this, The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Once again, that place of recognizing God's work, the Holy Spirit calling you, bringing you into adoption as a child of God, a place that you no longer live in fear, but live in hope, live in trust, live in faith, a heart that can cry out to God, not as some distant deity, but as Father, as Daddy. What a gift this is. And how quickly we become blind when we lose sight of the Holy Spirit's work in bringing this about. And then we can easily be left blind to the kingdom of God. We become blind to what it is that God is desiring to do in the world because we think it's all up to us. Martin Luther again helped us out a bit here. when he gave some understanding and explanation to the Lord's Prayer. As we will share later together here today in saying the Lord's Prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. In that second petition, as it's called, of the Lord's Prayer, Martin Luther had this to say. What is this or what does this mean? In fact, God's kingdom comes on its own without our prayer, but we ask in this prayer that it may also come to us. Well, how does this come about? Whenever our Heavenly Father gives us His Holy Spirit, so that through the Holy Spirit's grace, we believe God's holy word and live godly lives here in time and hereafter in eternity. See, once again, there is this work of the Holy Spirit in helping us to receive God's kingdom into our own lives, being transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, the power that we need to to live godly lives. It's not something that you have to whip up yourself. It's something you surrender to and open yourself up to. God's work working in you and through you for His good pleasure to not only bring about your salvation, bring about your adoption, but to help you see the kingdom that he is working in and working for and creating in your heart and ultimately in the world. This is good news. But again, if we miss what it is that God is doing through his Holy Spirit, We can become blind to these things just like we can also become blind to the power of prayer. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 27 says this. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of 
God. If you've ever found yourself in those places of prayer going, you know what, I don't even know what to pray today. So does it even matter? Can I even pray? Will it affect anything? Will it change anything? Yes, it does. Because it is the Holy Spirit's work within you that brings about this desire to pray and that ultimately leaves us in those places of weakness when we recognize, I can't do this, Lord. I can't fix this, Lord. I can't heal this, Lord. And we're left with only our stumblings and mumblings and grumblings and groanings. We can trust that the Holy Spirit is still at work interceding through us, even in those places of weakness, in those places of desperation. This is God's promise to us through his word. We need to invite the infilling of the Holy Spirit if we are going to see what God is going to do next. Because you see, there is a next. The Reformation didn't stop 500 years ago. It continues on every day in every generation and in every new group of people who are called together as his church to be reformed, to be renewed, to be inspired, to see the world with God's eyes, to see his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If we see it with only our natural eyes, we will always be blind. But when we see it through the Holy Spirit's lens, through the gift that he has given us of seeing ourselves through faith and seeing the world differently than it is today, then it gives us hope. It gives us inspiration. It helps us to trust and know that God is still in control. So how does this infilling of the Holy Spirit occur? Well, Jesus made it pretty clear when in Luke he told his believers, just ask. You have a good, good father who is far better than any earthly father, and what good earthly father, if his child asked him to to give him something good, wouldn't respond with something good? It's the same with your heavenly father who will give you the Holy Spirit if you simply ask. Now you may be saying, now wait a second, Pastor, are you saying that we don't have the Holy Spirit right now? That's not what I'm saying at all. You wouldn't be here today. You wouldn't be able to say Jesus is Lord if the Holy Spirit weren't already in you. He certainly is in you. That flame was lit inside of your heart in your baptism. But that flame must be tended If we want it to become a roaring fire that lights the way for us to see God's grace in every corner of our community. That's why Jesus invites us to invite the Holy Spirit. To ask. To seek. To welcome. And that's what I want us to do together today. I'm going to take some time right now to pray for you and for us. But I'm not going to use my words. I'm going to use the words of the Apostle Paul. As the Apostle Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus, he prayed that they would receive so much of what God has for them. And he centered it in the work of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Spirit, to bring this about in their lives. I trust that if Paul shared this with that church, that us hearing it together in this church can be our invitation to the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to pray this prayer and listen to this prayer as I speak it. I'm going to say it slowly to just give us a moment in this time right now to open our hearts and our spirits, surrender ourselves to the work of the Holy Spirit to fill us and empower us and reform us and renew us today. So wherever you are in this moment, just close your eyes. A 
Let's set our hearts before the Lord and hear these words of the Apostle Paul. For this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge. That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to His power that is at work within us. To Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen.